week 6, day number 1, and a stream oddity, the first game of the day, doesn't have a pause, Malthus. I'm very perplexed at that. But that's okay, we're all fine with that one. The size of velocity, sports, and cognitive gaming heading out onto the field. People have picked up their starting items to come back out here, and Fragmatic is going to be taking a Doran's Blade on his Sivir. I will be very intrigued to see where these two AD carries end up finding themselves landing. Yeah, and actually, when we were in the break before, we were talking about how Bane and Sivir, I've seen them picked as double AD carries before, but Sivir was the AD carry and Vayne was a solo laner going up against someone like a Renekton or like that. So, very interested to see where they wind up going and who's actually going to be in a duo lane with Evaniscus here. Is a little bit of uh, poking and prodding as they wind up going over by Cognitive's red buff area. We just did the Fiddlesticks Dark Wind picked up first, and because everybody from the side of Cognitive is grouped up, they're going to be cursing under their breaths about that Dark Wind bouncing back and forth between them. But other than just a little bit of jockeying for Vision Wars, they actually deny from the side of Velocity. They just wind up poking at each other and then going back to equal sides of the map. Yeah, Velocity, they're only going to get worn, worn down toward near like the entrance into that side of the jungle, uh, but they seem to be considering chasing this one now. Captain Zipbox is going to throw the flag over the wall. It's not going to reveal anyone here. Uh, so this is very interesting. Neither side has actually put a ward down onto the blue buff area, uh, so if Velocity ended up making another run into this area, Cognitive won't be able to see them coming until they are already there. Well, Velocity does have a 60 second ward in the banana brush, but it's not revealing that top section of the brush, so they don't exactly know if Cognitive has stayed over by their blue buff area, or if they've actually moseyed on and gone out to yonder pastures here. But it does look like we do have a lane swap initiated by both sides. Dual lane's going to be going into the top lane, and it is going to be Vayne heading into a 1v1 matchup against Caitlyn, which normally you see uh, Vayne's trying to avoid that straight head up matchup. Yeah, especially with a champion like Annie there as well. That which is, I mean, Annie just has so much early pressure against the low range champion like Vayne. There's so many opportunities to get a good stun down, trade really favorably with Caitlyn, and then Vayne doesn't really have an answer for that. Uh, Fiddle Six is is going to have to be the answer for that. Evanistus is going to have to just do a fantastic job of zoning people away and protecting Impactful through these early levels. Well, it's going to be a battle of the two any support mains in the NACL. Both of these guys, Zane King and Evaniscus, have a lot of experience playing Annie. Now it's time to see if Evaniscus can utilize that fiddle six to play against Annie. Of course, you can see in the top lane area, they are very afraid of that early stun being charged up by Zane King, but the Dark Wind and those bounces to silence her are going to be a good deterrent, at least in the early stages of the game. And it's letting Impactful and Nothing here just kind of harass each other one on one, while fiddle six actually starts to get a slight upper hand in this top lane matchup. Now, across the board, we've actually seen. Not too much kind of going down. CS accounts pretty much even in both the mid and now what would be the bottom solo lanes here. As we do see Chris's Olaf hitting a level 2 at about the same time that I Dream Zack is going to be able to. But their health bars are staying relatively even. The amount of pain that Chris puts down onto I Dream is just kind of being healed up by just going over those blobs. And that's what we're going to see. Chris is going to have to basically maintain a really aggressive posture in this lane and try to deny those blobs to I Dream. Uh, it, I mean, obviously the blobs, one of the things that was changed with Zach is that the blobs are, it's a little bit easier to actually zone him out and make it, make it a little more difficult for him. Uh, the hitbox on the blobs is a little bit smaller now. Uh, so, I mean, he might actually have a pretty good opportunity at shutting down a lot of that sustain that I Dream is going to get from free from his passive. Well, I Dream has actually backed off towards this tower and has a slight experience disadvantage because of the nature of the creep waves. Ziploc's going to come down here, this double buff, and a ghost already popped by Chris. Ziploc kind of just blocks him off there. The Undertow goes out as well. A ghost has been popped by Chris, but in comes NK Inc. from behind. Now Ziploc has to flash away. Chris getting dangerously low, but he is going to pick up the first blood. I Dream's going to get a kill back for that one. His passive is still available, so NK Inc.'s not going to be able to burst down Zach for now. But it's a one-for-one -one trade and worth it for first blood going over to Chris. So the first blood is going to go over to Chris, but he's going to have to deal with the fact that I Dream picked up the double buffs in that exchange, and that could be very problematic. That cooldown reduction and nothing here, man, those bounces. Yeah, actually the bounces, Evanisk is flashing forward, secures the kill, and then nothing here. Ignite ticking away though, Zankin's going to pick up that kill, and now in a 1v1 duel against Impactful, one auto attack, not going to seal the deal on a kill right there. Impactful has to be very careful of that situation, and it's a one for one trade in the top lane. The supports wind up going, uh, actually a kill picked up for each support, while the AD carry from the side of Cognitive winds up going down. And that was some space that Impactful really, really needed. He's going to be able to, to ideally... Well, no, he's going to have to head back out here as he did get zoned out mm -hmm. as well. I was going to say that he might be able to get back up against some CS, but I was like, wait, no, he had to run away from Andy. <laughs> he wasn't even really getting all that much. Uh, so the fact that he isn't going to go down, it's not really going to end up meaning as much as Captain Ziploc comes into the mid lane. 
Yeah, Flash has to be burned by Fragnatic. Zamfir throwing down that minefield, baiting out the spell shield there, so Fragnatic winds up using it to gain some mana back to try to turn around for the kill. Ziploc comes in with a quick flag and dragon burns the Flash away. But it does look like this mid lane matchup so far has been pretty even. The CS counts are relatively the same with Zip, uh, with actually Zamfira backing off for the time being and giving a little bit of CS towards Fragnatic, but it's kind of just been the power of that Ziggs passive that you can't forget about Brocking going up against just the wave clear and shove that Sivir has. You see Chris playing extremely aggressively despite the double buffs from Idream that red buff burning down, but it's not enough to deter Chris. He's just running forward again. Every time he trades with Idream, uh, and now that Idream is under the tower, he can't do it, but he's been very conscientious about stepping forward and squishing every single blob that he has access to. And it's it's made it you know pretty difficult for Idream to actually keep himself in this one. The reckless swing damage has been has been strong for Chris. Yeah, and Chris doing a really good job of using the harassment even though he's underneath tower from the side of Idream. And Idream went back after that first blood had been picked up. He has the double buffs, yes. He wanted to picking up a chain vest, so none of that true damage being mitigated. He doesn't have any health on his side to try to sustain through it. So pretty much it's still being as effective, the harass coming out from Chris, as it had been before that first blood was picked up. And that's that's gonna be interesting. Like I, I'm a little concerned that Chris is trading as much as he is with a champion like Zach, who even if he does kill him is gonna go into the passive. If he's under the tower, he's gonna be fine. Chris is just he's foregoing CS at this point, just trying to zone I Dream away as best he can. Yeah, and uh, we'll have to keep our eyes peeled for that one as Chris does have the double Doran's items in his inventory as well as a Crystalline Flash to keep himself nice and sustained. And top lane, it looks like Ziploc went forward a little bit too quickly there. The Pink Ward went down from Zane King to clear out the brush, but he was spotted out by the side of Velocity who immediately reacted and backed up. NK Inc, we can actually see him making a motion over towards that top lane area, and Ziploc being deterred has actually gone all the way back towards his Wraith camp. So there is a ward in the brush in front of NK Inc, but they don't exactly know where he is right now. Nothing here might wind up getting jumped on by a random dragon. He does have the ultimate available. We'll have to see if he does decide to pop the dragon. Said actually in the bottom lane, Chris wound up going down to I Dream as well, but up back in top lane, Zane King gets extremely low here as NK Inc tries to chase down onto him. Nothing here does use a 90 caliber net. They dissuade the aggression here in top lane from Velocity, and like you he said, Malph, is that aggression for Chris in the bottom lane kind of bit him in the butt. He was just trying to trade too hard with a champion that has so much more sustain. And eventually the moment came for the all-in and Zach's all-in plus, I mean, I believe there was a tower shot involved there for Chris as well. It was just, I mean, he just had more HP. He won the all-in because the other guy's life hit zero first. Uh, when it comes down to it in the game of League of Legends, that's what it's all about. So I dream he's still going to have his passive. The double buffs are gone. Uh, but at this point, you know, you've got to say that Zach has been an effective pickup thus far. Yeah, and the deceptive amount of damage that the less bounce actually deals, even though Chris isn't necessarily going to be affected by a lot of the crowd control portion of it, he's still going to have to respect the amount of damage that Zach can put down on him with a lot of spell combo. Same thing about respecting damage, they back off for NK Inc. there as he wants to put down a lot of pain on them. At the same exact time, nothing here getting aggressed on the Ignite. Tekken Way is not going to pick up a kill. The Ignite down on Impactful forces the Flash away, had to condemn Zane King's Annie back away. And as we see towards the mid lane, Zamfir and Fragmatic going at it. It's pretty much skirmishes all across the board here as Velocity now are trying to contest this blue buff here from the side of Cognitive. They don't want Zig to be able to spam those bombs out. His ultimate does wind up popping. NK Inc. goes down low. Chris is going to wind up forcing Idrim to go away with that elastic slingshot as the Ignite ticks down. All in all across the board, Velocity forces the smite out of Captain Ziploc, and now it's blue buff that's on Jarvin instead of Ziggs. Ziggs wants to clear out that uh, brush area though. He is going to have to burn the flash away as Chris and Fragnatic are chasing down on the hunt. Has been popped. The Ignite is ticking away, and Chris tanking up the tower lets Fragnatic get a kill so they lose the blue buff but they pick up a kill on the mid lane chris that was very tenuous there missed a couple of really crucial axes but it didn't matter that on the hunt gave them enough boost speed that chris was able to trade enough damage down and get himself back out of the tower very safely there velocity i mean they they had you know enough answers uh, and then basically zamfira got a little bit too greedy to clear out that blue buff camp as quickly as he did flash forward cataclysm Oh, the Flash Cataclysm, Ziploc picks up a kill on the very low HP, Chris, and unfortunately can't get out of there without a Flash on his side. Fragnatic winds up going down, as well as the rotation coming from the top lane from Cognitive, picks up two kills, but they do wind up losing that tower right there. Alright, so the double buffs now secured on the Captain Ziploc. Uh, that did go down once he smited his own blue buff away. As he's uh, stepping forward here, and we'll see, actually, yeah, there's Caitlyn and Annie heading back up to the top lane, so neither team really interested in trying to exercise some Dragon Control at this point.
No, no dragon control just yet, although this uh, the smite is still available for the side of velocity, but everybody else has gone back that isn't in that top lane, so we are gonna wind up Ooh. seeing Cognitive just be content to do so with Ziploc and IGM as now Zamfira on the respawn runs down mid lane and he's coming over as well. Yes. NK Inky has his flash available, had his dragon's ascent available, but he's not gonna go and contest it blindly in a potential 3v1 situation. And then this top lane here, I wanna stop and talk about this for a second, Malthus, because we saw Caitlyn and Annie come down to that mid lane. And you might think that, oh, okay, she's giving up CS and some tower pressure, but they're so far ahead in that lane, it's 82 compared to 48 CS up there. Absolutely, and this is why you don't like picking main into Caitlyn, as far as the laning phase goes. Uh, it's just every time you come up to CS, you take so much auto attack harass. And when you put on a champion with 625 range like Annie, you know, that becomes, you have to respect that as well. And then Vayne's typical response is just to tumble in and trade harder than you can trade back, auto attack, tumble, and then condemn you away before you can really trade all that back. Maybe get one auto attack back, but Vayne's come out significantly, you know, significantly ahead of that one. Zane King's anti-stun disallows that, but there's a flash for you on nothing here. Yeah, flash here from Evaniscus. He gets stunned for his troubles, but NK Inc. is in the area as is Captain Ziploc. Zane King pops the terrorist with no stun available. NK Inc. picks up a kill for himself. Now in comes the Crow's Numbers. Fragnatic joins the fray. The bomb and the Cataclysm go off, but it's not enough damage quite yet. Spell shields the ace in the hole. Two kills for Velocity. Zero so far for the side of Cognitive. The minefield goes down from Zamfir, trying to pick up a kill on the low HP Impactful, but the bombs are not going to find the target in this one. It's a two for nothing in favor of Velocity. That's what we were talking about a little bit earlier, about the, the, the synergy between Sivir plus champions like Shivana or Vayne, who just need, you know what, all I really need is a whole lot of move speed, and then I can just kind of run around and kill everyone. <laughs> and that's exactly what we saw right there. Uh, we saw Fragmatic came in down the lane with NK Inc. And the Shivana was so fast that unless those champions had flash, they weren't going to be able to get away from that one. And even, I mean, neither one of them had flash, so we didn't see. But to be perfectly honest, I think Burnout plus On The Hunt might have even been able to catch up with Zane King, maybe, even if he did flash away. Well, that's what we talked about in Champions, like just the kind of press the buttons and run into the enemy team until they're dead composition coming out from Velocity and in full force in that top lane, it really shown true on how aggressive they can actually be with it. And even though they haven't taken down that top lane tower after that top engagement, they are going to wind up swapping their lanes back up, partly due to that CS disadvantage that Impactful currently has. So it's going to be Vayne with those silver bolts stacking up. She only has one level in it currently, but it's going to be going up against a tanky Zach who, well, with a Sunfire cape on this side, true damage and percentage of health damage are going to be a little bit of a nuisance for him even this early on. Absolutely, yeah, they're going to have to be a little bit more conscious of that, of that one. Uh, Sunfire cape done on Zach is, I mean, excellent for his, uh, his pushing power. Uh, he, I mean, it's really, really strong. You put a Jarvan in there, he's got a lot of consistent DPS. And if you can use that Cataclysm to lock up somebody like a Fiddlesticks, then the Zach could very easily pick up a kill with the Let's Bounce. Uh, but, I, I mean, at this point in the game, damage-wise, I have to feel like Chris's Olaf is significantly more threatening, even though all he's picked up are pieces of a Spirit Visage. Uh, that, that's just, the champion has so much damage in his kit, you must respect it. And the one thing is too, by putting Chris into that 1v2 situation, when he has the Ragnarok available, he's not going to be afraid of an Annie stun to potentially wind up going into a bad situation. You can see already, nothing you're taking on extreme load, just through the undertoes and the reckless swings. There's the Tibber stun that the Ragnarok gets popped. Chris winds up taking a couple tower shots, gives the kill on over to Shivana, and well, we literally just talked about the damage and the no fear from the Tibber stun, and it shows true right there. So, yeah. Long story short, <laughs> respect all lost damage. <laughs> That's, uh, yep. Okay. Okay, Chris, well played. Well played, sir. <laughs> he actually doesn't have a single level in Vicious Strikes, four levels in Reckless Swing, and four levels in Undertow. So that's massive amounts of DPS. He's pretty much gone for just all damage and no sustain on his Olaf build. So as you can see right there, it definitely wound up paying off for him in that 1v2 kind of situation. Now we have Velocity with three members strong on the bottom lane, two members strong on the top lane. They are really going for these outer towers that are left on the map. Top lane took a little bit of damage. Bottom's gonna be a little bit harder here. Cataclysm locks him up for his Ziggs bomb, but Evaniscus winds up just sitting there channeling the curse storm in their face. Fragnatic picks up one kill. Evaniscus pays with his life for it, but now Impactful is ticking away with an Ignite and a Let's Bounce from iDream Zach. Zamfira gets an extremely low flash away from Fragnatic. gonna pick up a kill and avoid death for now, but iDream is chasing down, uses the Elastic Slingshot. No spell shield available for Sivir left there. Idream picks up a double kill for himself, and it's a three for two situation in favor of Cognitive.
And then on the other side of the map, Cognitive, we're going to have the opportunity to try to push down this tower as well. So, the, you know, things are looking pretty bright for Cognitive right now. I mean, a, a couple of scary exchanges early on. Uh, Chris just randomly picking up a kill with the help of NK Inc. up in the top lane. They definitely were not expecting that. Plus, nothing here uses cleanse to get away from that one. But down on the bottom lane, really, really solid play and nice trading here for the side of Cognitive is going to apply enough pressure that they pull people away and they offer themselves the opportunity to grab the top tower. And is going to be able to deny a significant number of creeps into this one while getting some damage down into this tower. So, Cognitive, they lead by a little over a thousand gold uh so i mean they're they're still you know in a good spot despite the fact that we've seen a couple of plays that were kind of like uh, but uh you know they're, they're playing playing this one well well velocity took a bit of a gamble right there they had three in the bottom two in the top and we're trying to pressure those outer towers and they lost the fight on both fronts to cognitive so they lose a tower in the top lane that bottom tower takes a lot of damage and now that duo lane could potentially go into the bottom area they could just push out this top lane and wait for a dragon to come up like it will be in the next 30 seconds. Cognitive, by turning around that aggression from Velocity, have kind of gained a little bit of the upper hand. And even though Velocity had the numbers advantage in a certain area while pushing down those towers, they didn't have the synergy of their full composition. We've seen Sivir and Shivana be a big driving force for going forward, but not necessarily the squishy fiddlesticks and the underfed vein at this point in time. So we see Zamfira just trying to farm up. He's got the Athenes and Holy Grail done. There's the spell pen moots as well. Uh, as we take a look at Fragmatic, he's picked up a Bloodthirster first and looks to be potentially going in for a Last Whisper as a second item. Uh, so I, that, that makes some good sense to me. Olaf has actually just gone straight up Spirit Visit, just his first item along with the Crystal and Flask, which is intriguing to me. And this is, this is my principal concern right now for the side of Velocity, is the fact that Impactful here at the 16 minute mark has not been able to complete even his Blade of the Ruin King as the first item. Uh, Impactful is significantly further behind. He might get something here as they go in for this fight. Oh, Crowstorm gets popped, or Eminence gets the fear under nothing here. He's gonna want to take in a lot of damage. The dragon form goes up. Nothing here. Nets backwards. He's still alive. Zinking's gonna wind up being the one that bites the dust there, but a lot of damage coming up from the side of Cognitive. Impactful has to tumble away from a flag and drag. Ziploc gets down extremely low, but Zamfir is chasing down into a 1v2 situation. Dealing a lot of damage, has the blue buff available. Fragnatic comes in from the side, turns it around with an on the hunt. The bounce away onto the satchel charge is gonna keep him alive for now, but Chris is beelining straight for him underneath that tower. He's chasing away on the Captain Ziploc, chasing towards Zamfira, and even though a lot of ultimates are popped in that situation, it's a one for none so far. My goodness. Chris still sticking around with this one. He thinks he can find an opportunity here with the rest of his side. Pragmatic and Impactful gonna start getting some damage on the tower. Our dream is maybe, no, not gonna get the initiation is Kadim. Gonna keep Impactful safe on this one. But man, oh man, Evan Iska has tried to flash forward and get a fear down. He actually got disrupted by the Satchel Charge and didn't have the opportunity to really get any meaningful CC down into Zamfira. That was arguably the only thing that kept Zamfira alive in that one. Uh, and also we should point out, Zane King wanted to turn that around and counter engage. Like he, he was sitting there praying for an opportunity to counter engage, but the Dark Wind from Eminiscus bounced to him so many times and just kept him silenced that he never had the opportunity to get that stun down and turn that fight back around. All right, so now we have Cognitive once again. They push away the aggression from Velocity, and it opens them up into what can be the second dragon of the game for them. But no one from Velocity really nearby except for Ebeniscus and Chris. They're not going to be able to get over the wall, and they're not going to be able to wind up denying that one. So even though they do get the top tower from the side of Velocity, they lose out on that dragon, and the bottom tower is still going to be defended for the time being from the side of Cognitive. NK Inc. has kind of gone into split push mode. It's kind of like he's the new jungle, uh, the new top laner, and Chris is the new jungler, as he and Ebeniscus are turning the aggression down onto nothing here trying to take advantage of the weaker mid-game lull from caitlin here we can see a lot of damage being applied from chris he is going to be able to pick up a kill for himself well evan is pretty much just run zone defense on zane king in that bottom lane yeah that was one of the issues with olaf one of the reasons why people felt that his power level needed to be revisited was because there was a situation where if he landed an undertow on you you never got away from it like you just didn't unless you had an escape spell you, th there was no way you were going to be able to avoid him right there. And that was a situation 90 caliber net had already been used. There was no flash available for nothing here. Once Chris landed that one undertow, all that move speed he has, plus the, basically the chain slow coming out, just guaranteed nothing here is death. A big old Mega Inferno Bomb deters Velocity from pushing down onto that second bottom tower, where Velocity and the towers that they've gotten have actually started to turn in their favor now. Three towers compared to one, but with the double dragons picked up from the side of Cognitive, the gold lead isn't as far ahead as you would think it would be with that big of a tower score. Ten kills on the side of Velocity and eight only picked up for Cognitive, but the gold differential is only a couple hundred gold in favor 
of, of velocity at this point in time. So Cognitive, they've lost out on a couple opportunities, but they're definitely not out. And I mean, technically, with those outer towers still on the map for velocity, that's money that have yet to be capitalized on from Cognitive. With a lot of AoE spells, they, you think that they want to wind up going for these towers, especially with the Caitlyn when that Bloodthirster build. Absolutely, yeah, and and really the biggest gap between the two of them is definitely the Caitlyn Bane. We're, we're going to have to keep an eye on that one. Is thinking, ooh, did he just pop the ultimate for vision? There's no way. <laughs> I don't There's know no about it. It might have been for vision or it might have been just a little preemptive right there, but they wind up using the timber, so that's not going to be available for a giant AoE initiation that they continue to see just tower. However, it can be used to tank up a couple tower shots there, but it looks like that once that timbers have been popped, Cognitive are a little uncertain of what to do right now. Idream looks like he might be motioning towards that top lane, while a couple members left in this mid lane to continue to siege on this tower. Absolutely, yeah, and and you know, Caitlyn, this is where Caitlyn thrives. This is what Caitlyn wants to do, but you have to respect this initiation. <laughs> Shivano goes in, Zanking has no tippers available for the enemy team. In comes Chris as well, and Fragnatic has on the hunt pop. They are scattering them absolutely everywhere. Fiddlesis Crossroom is using the back. Chris goes 1v2 and solos against nothing here, but Impactful in the meantime gets taken out by iDream. Eveniscus will pick up a kill on the Captain Ziploc, but he transfers double bus over to Zamfira at the same time. Chris rejoins the fray now as he and NK Inc. are going down onto iDream. Flash away from Zaxxon to keep him alive for the time being. The Undertow lands on him in the brush and Chris with a lot of HP on his side, but no Ghost is going to slow chase after I Dream right here. Zane King winds up coming around from the side as well as Zamfira, and all in all, it's a two for two trade in favor of, well, pretty much no one. It was kind of even. And I mean, there's just, there's mechanical flaws that are coming down, honestly. There's, there's, there's some execution errors that are happening there. Zamfira's ultimate didn't hit anybody. Fragnatic popped the spell shield just like in case something happened, like maybe if he lagged out. Uh, but he was pretty much the only person that the Mega Inferno Bomb even had an opportunity to hit. Uh, so, I, I mean, I like the team play from Velocity. I like the way that they're splitting these fights off. Because right now, the story is the top laners, right? Like, Chris just went full hand mode 1v2, just chased down the AD carry and just took nothing here out of that fight altogether. Uh, but then, I Dream effectively did the same thing. I mean, he only, I believe he only scored one kill during that fight, but he was a huge part in at least, you know, one other one that I saw, potentially even both of the other ones that happened there. Uh, but, uh, or, yeah, okay. Yeah, I think he already had one of the assists, so I'm just looking at the scoreboard. But, I mean, these two are colossal right now. They're the two biggest men on the map, and it's going to be so difficult for either of the teams to really shut down that top laner's presence in the fight. Zack and Olaf have such a strong, persistent damage threat as they continue running around with a Sunfire Cape with all the the magic persistent DPS that Zach's capable of, with Chris, you know, consistently able to throw down Reckless Wing, consistently able to throw down Undertoes, and deal massive, massive amounts of damage while being completely unpeelable. Well, Cognitive in these fights, a lot of the kills, like you said, they're going over to the side of Idream. He's become a massive tanky threat on the map, and even though he has surprising amounts of damage, he doesn't have a lot of DPS that you're going to want to get from a Ziggs or a Caitlyn on their team. One That's four true. and one for nothing here is a little bit of an unfortunate side effect to these team fights. whereas on the flip side for Velocity, if you want to think about something positive for them, it was a four, two, and three Sivir. Even though Vayne isn't getting as many kills as she wants, or even the farm that she wants, because they have two AD carries on on their side, they're still able to dish out a lot of damage in these fights, and even though their big main tanks of NK Inc. and Chris charge into the enemy backline, they have the DPS right now to take out Captain Ziploc, who's the tank, and take out nothing here in the process. So, in these fights right now, Velocity might be trading a little bit more effectively. Cognitive needs to get some kills on their AD carry, or maybe even just on their mid laner. He has two already, so it's not the worst thing in the world, but he is still a couple hundred gold behind Fragnetic in that mid lane matchup, and despite all all the CS advantages for Caitlyn, she only has a couple hundred gold over Vayne. Am I, am I allowed to dare to hope that Eveniscus is building a Shirelia's next? Am I, I, am I allowed to hope that that's happening? Because I really, really do hope that that's happening right now. I mean, why not? If you're all going to run forward, you might as well get Australia's Reverie to just run forward faster. Eveniscus is not going to be able to complete that. If he's going to die, has to flash away there. The Elastic Slingshot Shot came out from Idream. And in the top lane, nothing here was AFK farming. And he found himself a wild Shavana. NK Inc. with that red buff applied. Nothing here trying to get away, but he's below half HP already. Has to flash away. NK Inc. flashes after him as well. The burnout taking away. And those icy flames are going to pick up a kill for himself. Mid lane does a giant fight as Eveniscus gets obliterated right there. The tower goes down to Captain Zipmon. 
Puck as well, but double AD carries in the back line, just ripping through the armor that Jarvan has applied. And in the back, surprise, Chris appears, picks up a kill for himself in that back line area. Idream has been forced away. Zane King has the flash right. He's slowed by Undertow. Another one lands. Chris has a blue buff. Zane King is not getting away from Olaf this time around. Impactful picks up another kill that he much needs. And that's a complete turnaround. A four for one across the map in favor of Velocity. The, I mean, just the Olaf pain train is what got Zane King caught out there. I mean, he even flashed away. If you don't time your flash perfectly, and if you don't find a way to break that line where Olaf is just able to consistently chase you down and pick up his axes again and again and again, you are not getting away from him. That just netted them that extra kill at the end of the fight. And man, NK Inc., I mean, he's a jungle Shivana who's transitioned into being the guy who's shutting down any split push whatsoever. If he finds a carry alone, he's going to do that to him as iDream tries to replicate the feat in the bottom lane. And yeah, those two AD carries, it turns out they have a lot of damage. Yeah, they definitely do. But can they take a 3v2 as Amphira jumps in and Ziploc is there. There's the Mega Inferno Bomb. It takes down Fragnatic Spell Shield already used. Evaniscus says take a Dark Wind and try to run in Papal. Taking those auto attacks, trying to cut good tumble away from Ziploc's flag and drag. He's going to wind up getting away with his life for the time being. Very, very nicely played there, him getting himself away from that one. Uh, potentially on the pre-nerf Jarvan, that might have still gotten caught out. Like, that, that was really, really close. Uh, but he very, very nice timing on the tumble to get himself away from this one. NK Inc. <laughs> trying to get a little aggressive on this dragon here. He's going to find Captain Ziploc. Smite War. Smite War. Oh, Ziploc wants to take that one home as NK Inc. has to pop his ultimate to get over that wall there because he didn't want to be sandwiched by, well, everybody except for I Dream for the side of Cognitive. So maybe a little bit of a gutsy play right there. NK Inc. trying to take the dragon for himself being a dragon. Maybe he thought he had a slight edge on that one. But Cognitive wound up taking that one from the side of Velocity. So, so far, they've gotten every single dragon in this game, Malphite. It's three to none right now, but the towers are six to two in favor of Velocity. Those building objectives still being the objective here for Velocity. I, I, I want to compliment Captain Ziploc here. Like, I really do, because NK Inc. has been one of the more on-point junglers as far as objective smite timing, and Captain Ziploc was two levels under NK Inc. He was two levels below him. That is how much better NK Inc. smite was. <laughs> And Captain Ziploc was still able to steal that one away. That is not something we see very often. NK Inc. kind of falling asleep on the smite like that. Yeah, and NK Inc. has had, I believe it's been, what, two or three extremely impressive Baron seals thus far in the NACL? I mean, like, the only one who really rivals NK Inc. would be Nintendo Dex, who, for some reason, that guy's, that guy's smite always deals, like, the full HP of Baron. I don't know how, but he always winds up stealing the Baron away on those kind of situations. But... Keeping his team in the game is Captain Ziploc with that very mighty smite finger for himself. And now it's Cognitive with an Oracle's Elixir on Zane King. They're walking through their own jungle with caution, using that flag to wind up scouting out where Velocity could potentially be, because vision control is going to be absolutely crucial now. There are no towers left on the map for Cognitive that are outside of their base, which means that everywhere could potentially be a war zone. With so many people that can charge at you or jump over walls, they have to be extremely careful of where they tread. Alright, sound like Sam lagged out a little bit there, but hopefully everybody can still hear everything that's going on. Uh, it's I'm, I'm very intrigued by how the farm is being allotted right now in I Dream. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Value Q though, that that Q hit four people. Like that, that's about as much damage as you're gonna get out of that like stretch Armstrong stuff. That's that was bad. like a Walmart bargain bin Q right there. He just got four for the price of one. Oh man, <laughs> but I, I'm intrigued by how the farm is being distributed in here. They're not funneling that much farm into main. Like, open lanes that are available for split push are getting choked, choked up by- Oh, here's oh! the initiation! Zane King a little too far without the rest of his team. Eats the entire Velocity squad as Evan Niskus charges over the wall and Zane gets a kill on that one. Now it's Chris. Once again, he has his sight set on nothing here. I Dream is there trying to peel for his AD carry. Is it going to be enough? The Undertow's landing. He is going to save nothing here, but the rest of his team has crumbled under Velocity. It's a three for one trade in favor of the blue squad right now. And I Dream, Zach, and nothing here is Caitlyn at very low HP, have to back away. Not only do they wind up losing that fight, but with all this vision cleared out for the side of Velocity, they set their eyes on the Big Bear and Nasher. I Dream held his ultimate right until Chris's ultimate faded, so that he knew he could actually get the lockup uh, and keep nothing here alive. I mean, that was really, really nice time with the knockup there. I uh, was able to get just enough damage down to Chris to keep nothing here alive, but in the end, it doesn't matter. I mean, if, if nothing here isn't dealing damage to the team, he's not achieving his role. He's he's not doing what an AD carry needs to do at this phase of the game. I mean, a Caitlyn with Bloodthirster and Static Shiv needs to be dealing damage to the entire team and needs to be safe while doing so. And the only person she hit that whole fight was Chris. I mean, that that's 
it was a really, really smart initiation from the side of Velocity. They were able to find a way to get over the wall, take Zane King out, which is one of the scarier members of that side right now, because if the entire team gets locked up for 1.75 seconds, there's no telling what Zamfira's Ziggs is going to be able to do to them in that time. Uh, so it's very important that they not allow Zane King to get one of those beautiful initiations down. But, you know, that said, they kind of need to be much more careful with their positioning. They need to not get caught out like that. If they find themselves in an actual 5v5 fight, we might be able to see a little bit more of the power that they built for themselves. But as it is right now, Velocity significantly ahead, especially with that Baron buff. Well, that's what we were talking about before. If Cognit is able to get a big 5v5 AoE team fight, it's definitely going to be in their favor. However, the side of Velocity has so much disruption, so much charge at them pretty much that they're scattering the enemy team and not letting them group up you can see often you saw chris just charging on the nothing here every single fight nk inc winds up jumping onto somebody we can see right here there's a sorelius reverie pop there's an on the hunt pop and in flies nk inc Zane King just gets absolutely massacred in front of his own base. Fragnatus got the ace in the hole on him, but Chris is just going to block that one up with a very tanky Olaf. Ziploc goes in, but it's a 4v5 situation. Everness gets over the wall. Picks up the kill on the over-aggressive Jarvan. Double kill picked up with that Crow Storm. Let's bounce his Zach, but it's a bounce the heck out of there. Nothing here gets condemned against the wall. He flashes over. NK Inc. picks up the kill for that one. It's a 4 for 0, and Cognitive just can't fight Velocity. The, the farm for Velocity got distributed such that NK Inc. picked up a lot of the farm that normally would have gone to Impactful. They looked at Impactful and said, you know what? You have Blade of the Ruin King and Phantom Dancer. You're fine. Like, at this point, he's finished up a Last Whisper as well because of how much map control they've been able to take, how many objectives they've been able to grab up, and wow, that's actually going to be the Surrender Boat here. But because of that, NK Inc. is a terrifying Shivana, picking up four kills and eight assists. Uh, along with all that farm, allows him to just be really confident to ult the back line, just do whatever he feels like in these fights.